11 Scandalous and Incredible Facts About Zachary Taylor Zachary Taylor, the 12th President of the United States, served from March 1849 until his death in July 1850. While his presidency was brief, Taylor's life and career were filled with events that ranged from scandalous to incredible. This video delves into some of the lesser-known, controversial, and fascinating aspects of this American leader's life. Fact number 1. Mystery of his death. Zachary Taylor's sudden death on July 9, 1850, has been a subject of intrigue and speculation for historians and the public alike. Initially believed to have been caused by gastroenteritis after consuming cherries and milk at a July 4 celebration, the abrupt nature of his illness and demise led to various theories over the years, including the possibility of poisoning. In 1991, responding to these persistent rumors and calls for clarity, Taylor's body was exhumed from its resting place in the Zachary Taylor National Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky, for modern forensic analysis. Led by Kentucky's chief medical examiner, George Nichols, the examination sought to detect traces of arsenic poisoning, a common suspicion. However, the results revealed no evidence of poison, suggesting that the levels of arsenic found were consistent with those normally found in the body. Despite these findings, the precise cause of Taylor's death remains unclear, with some experts still considering other potential causes or contributing factors beyond the initial diagnosis. Number 2. A Late Bloomer to Politics Zachary Taylor's entry into politics was highly unconventional, marked by his late start and lack of prior political involvement. Before his presidency, Taylor had focused on his military career, serving in the U.S. Army for over four decades and achieving the rank of Major General. His military service included key roles in the War of 1812, the Black Hawk War, and the Mexican-American War, where he earned significant public acclaim. This military fame catapulted him into the political arena, despite having never voted in an election before running for the presidency. In 1848, without any previous political office experience, Taylor was elected as the 12th President of the United States. His outsider status was both a strength and a weakness, as it brought a fresh perspective to the presidency but also left him inexperienced in political maneuvering. Taylor's transition from military life to the highest political office in the country highlights the unique path of his career and the American public's appetite for leaders perceived as untainted by the political establishment. Number 3. The Reluctant President Zachary Taylor, known for his military prowess during the Mexican-American War, emerged as a presidential candidate more due to public admiration and Whig Party support than personal ambition. His 1848 campaign was marked by his passive approach, relying heavily on supporters to advocate on his behalf. Demonstrating a sense of duty rather than a quest for political power, Taylor's reluctant but successful bid for the presidency highlighted his role as an outsider. His rise to the nation's highest office, fueled by his reputation rather than political maneuvering, showcased the unique potential for a figure of national service to ascend to leadership without following the conventional political path. Number 4. No Inaugural Ball Zachary Taylor's inauguration was markedly different from those of his predecessors due to the absence of an inaugural ball. This decision was a testament to Taylor's personal values, emphasizing his preference for modesty over grandeur. In the broader context of 19th-century American politics, inaugural balls were significant social events, symbolizing both celebration and unity. Taylor's choice to forego this tradition suggests a break from the norm and highlights his distinct approach to the presidency, a role he assumed with a sense of duty rather than a desire for the celebratory spotlight. This act underscored his image as a man more committed to substance over style, aligning with his military background where practicality often took precedence over ceremony. Number 5. Ownership of Slaves while Zachary Taylor owned slaves, his presidency was characterized by a nuanced approach to the issue of slavery. Owning slaves in Louisiana, where agricultural labor was heavily dependent on slavery, Taylor's stance as president was somewhat contradictory to his personal life. This duality reflects the complex attitudes toward slavery among many American leaders of the time. His opposition to the extension of slavery into newly acquired territories from the Mexican-American War placed him at odds with pro-slavery advocates, revealing the deep divisions within the country. 
Taylor's position on slavery is particularly noteworthy considering the era's heightened tensions over this issue, which would eventually lead to the Civil War. His stance illustrates the intricate balance of personal beliefs, political pressures, and national unity that defined his presidency. Number 6. The Galfin Affair Scandal The Galfin Affair scandal during Taylor's administration involved a financial claim against the government that was settled in a manner benefiting Secretary of War George Crawford, among others. This incident highlighted the challenges Taylor faced in his commitment to a corruption-free government. The scandal was emblematic of the broader issues of patronage and cronyism that were prevalent in 19th-century American politics. It not only contradicted Taylor's campaign promises but also tested his administration's ethical boundaries. This affair serves as a significant example of the complexities and ethical dilemmas inherent in governance, particularly in an era when personal and political interests were often closely intertwined. Taylor's handling of the scandal reflects the limitations and challenges of maintaining integrity within the highest echelons of political power. Number 7. A Love Story with Tragic End Sarah Knox Taylor's marriage to Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederate States, was a significant event in Zachary Taylor's family life. The marriage in 1835, despite Taylor's reservations about his daughter marrying a military man, highlighted the personal dynamics and challenges Taylor faced. Sarah's untimely death from malaria just three months after her wedding was a devastating blow to both families. This tragedy underscores the vulnerability and personal losses experienced by figures in American history, showing that despite their public roles, they faced profound personal trials. Number 8. Presidential Horse as a Souvenir Old Whitey, Zachary Taylor's horse, became a symbol of his presidency and a favorite among White House visitors. The practice of plucking hairs from the horse's mane as keepsakes speaks to the ways in which personal and presidential artifacts were cherished by the public. This unique interaction between the president's personal life and the public illustrates the deep fascination and reverence held for the presidency, as well as the ways in which everyday items can become imbued with historical significance. Number 9. Rebellious Son Richard Taylor's decision to join the Confederate Army as a general, despite his father's strong unionist stance, highlights the complex familial dynamics against the broader backdrop of a nation on the brink of civil war. This divergence in political and military allegiances within a single family mirrors the divisions that tore at the fabric of American society. Richard's role in the Confederate Army and his achievements there stand in stark contrast to Zachary Taylor's legacy as a national military hero and president committed to preserving the Union. Number 10. A President Without a Vice President The vacancy in the vice presidency for the entirety of Taylor's term is a notable anomaly in American political history. This situation arose because, at the time, the U.S. Constitution did not allow for the immediate filling of the vice presidential vacancy until the next election. Millard Fillmore's succession to the presidency upon Taylor's death left the vice presidency unfilled, highlighting the potential vulnerabilities in the American political system and the importance of succession planning. Number 11. Resistance to Secession Taylor's firm opposition to the secession of southern states, despite his own southern background and status as a slave owner, marked him as a staunch unionist. His reputed readiness to personally lead the army against seceding states and to hang secessionists, potentially including his own son, underscores the depth of his commitment to the Union. This stance is particularly notable given the era's rising sectional tensions and the civil war that would erupt a decade after his presidency. Taylor's position on secession reflects the complex allegiances and beliefs of individuals during a tumultuous period in American history.